All right. Um, I don't know what I'm going to call this video. I am seriously uh, concerned about that because um, I want to make sure that, you know, um, someone is able to find this video, right? Um, uh, to, to get the information um, that they're looking for. Um, but at the same time, I can't be too wordy. So I don't know. But um, this is something that I have talked about a lot uh, personally and professionally, something that I've been doing and practicing uh, with clients, but have never uh, done a video on. So um, first, I just want to take you through uh, the Taxpayer Bill of Rights. Uh, I'm sure a lot of people have never seen this, didn't even know it existed, uh, but this is the U.S. Taxpayer Bill of Rights. These are your rights um, as a, a taxable entity, as a taxable person, right? So number one, you have the right to be informed. You have the right to quality service. You have the right to pay no more than the correct amount of tax, which is really important. You have the right to challenge the IRS uh, in their positions and be heard by them, which is important. You have the right to appeal an IRS decision in an independent form. And so what that means is, is that anytime the IRS has audited you, anytime the IRS said that you owe X amount of dollars, uh, you always have the right to appeal. I get a lot of people that call me with letters and the IRS says that you have so many days to reply to us. If you don't reply to us, this is going to happen. That's going to happen. And the first thing I do is I call call my client and I explain to them that, listen, you have the right to appeal. Don't worry about timelines and the scare tactics um, that are used uh, by the IRS. Um, you, you have the right to appeal. Um, the right to finality, and what that means is, is that um, the IRS cannot prolong and keep dragging stuff out, even though uh, that's what they have a tendency to do. Uh, you have the right to have an answer have a final answer and be done with the whole thing. Uh, you have the right to privacy, which is a bit of a joke these days. Uh, you have the right to confidentiality, uh, which again is something of a joke these days, but it's still important. There's a lot of people that work for the IRS, and so you may not want a lot of your business uh, uh, thrown around. Uh, this is equally important uh, when we consider the fact that a lot of politicians uh, in the U.S., uh, are being asked to provide their tax documents. And so we have to be very careful how we proceed down that road because again, politicians are just citizens. They're not special people. Um, and so when we are requiring politicians to present their tax documents, then we open the door uh, for individuals to do uh, as well. I mean, it can be very possible that your job starts asking you, hey, where's a copy of your tax return? You know what I mean? So we don't, we don't, we don't want that, that kind of stuff out there. Um, the right to retain representation. Uh, I think that's very straightforward. Uh, the right to fair and just tax system. And that's what we're talking about today. That's what's really important to me in dealing uh, with the IRS and uh, taxpayers. So we're going to get into this just a little bit to make sure we understand what it means. And I'll tell you from my perspective, uh, what this means is, is when I'm sitting with someone and uh, I'm, con you know, just uh, talking to them about, uh, their taxes and, and what is being owed and, and this type of thing. Um, I get a lot of people that complain. They say, this is not fair. I don't understand why I have to pay this. And that's exactly what this means. And um, personally, myself, I seriously, when my client says, this is not fair, I don't like this, I don't think this is right, I take that to heart. I take that seriously. And if my client does not think it's fair, then I don't think it's fair period and 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 we we approach the situation uh from that perspective okay so i uh, just want to read over this real quick taxpayers have the right to expect the tax system to consider facts and circumstances that might affect their underlying liabilities ability to pay or ability to provide information timely taxpayers have the right to receive assistance from the taxpayer advocate service if they're experiencing financial difficulty or if the irs has not resolved their tax issues properly and timely through its normal channels uh, the taxpayer advocate service is basically internal affairs uh, they're supposed to be an independent body outside of the irs so that if you have issues with any 
IRS uh, employees or if you have any problems with the IRS in general, you can go to the Taxpayer Advocate Service um, and, and have them um, help you um, navigate the IRS channels and, and sometimes they have a, a bit more pull uh, with those IRS employees uh, than we do um, as just, you know, ordinary uh, people calling in or, or, or walking into the, uh, the, the, the service center. So uh, let's take this just a, a little bit further, okay? Um, what you can expect, okay? If you can't pay your tax debt in full and you meet certain conditions, you can get a payment plan with the IRS, okay? You can submit an offer in compromise, asking the IRS to settle your tax debt for less than the full amount. You can do this if you believe you do not owe all or part of the tax debt, you are unable to pay the full amount within the time permitted by law to collect it, or paying the full amount would cause financial hardship or would be unjust, okay? That's the biggest part. That's what I come across over and over and over again. Uh, every so often I, I get the, I don't believe I, I owe that, but for the most part, uh, most people are just saying that, you know, I cannot afford to pay this. I just can't do it. Like where I'm going to get this money from, you know, those are the kind of conversations um, that, that, that I have. And those are the things um, that, that push me uh, to, to do this stuff. And we'll get into the calculations uh, here in just a second. Um, so it, it says right here, the IRS has published a list of national and local guidelines about the basic cost of living. You can use it when considering an offer to reduce your tax debt. The IRS won't use these guidelines if they result in you're not having enough money to pay your basic living expenses. The IRS would use your actual expenses instead. So let's talk about that for a second. All right. The IRS taxpayer um, the Bill of Taxpayer Rights, if you're reading between the lines, what it basically says is, is that the, you are not, you cannot be ex expected to pay tax if paying the tax means that you won't be able to afford a basic cost of living, food, gas, uh, lights, phone, okay, uh, rent, mortgage. Um, you cannot pay taxes if it means that you are not able to pay one of those things. Um, and so there's a, a very simple, uh, straightforward way to calculate that. And I'm going to walk you through that today. Um, and, you know, the title that I'm thinking about for this is really what I tell people when I'm talking to them is that you may not owe any taxes at all. You know, when someone um, uh, comes to me or if I'm filing return and I see that they have a balance due, the very first thing I do is, is I figure out, okay, even though they have a balance due, does this person even owe this money? Do they even owe it? Do they have to pay it? It's the very first thing I look at. Someone may come to me and say, oh, I owe the IRS and it's been 10 years, you know, this and that, and, and I keep getting these letters, da, da, da. And the first thing I ask myself is, does this person actually owe this money? Okay. And there's a very quick and easy way to figure that out. And we're going to walk through that uh, today. So um, first things first, I want to show you how to get to this information. Of course, I'm going to, uh, to publish this. It's going to be in the description of the video, but um, it's important that you know how to get there. Very, very simple. IRS collection standards, if you're using Google, if you're using Chrome, uh, it will more than likely be the very first link uh, that you see there, and it's IRS collection standards, okay? All right. So the very first thing that we're going to look at is housing, okay? Now, the housing is going to be um, done county by county, and I'm going to just pick a random state in a random county um, for this illustration uh, just for fun, okay? So New Mexico, why not? And let's go with, uh, I've heard of Colfax County, not sure where it is, but I've heard of it. Okay, so Colfax County, and let me show this too. So these numbers are gonna change um, year to year, okay? Um, I won't go into uh, how the numbers are collected uh, in this video, uh, but understand that it is collected from basically a census uh, type of, um, of organization that goes out and collects this information, and then they, they, they publish it uh, for benefit of the IRS and, and for others um, uh, that, that, that need this information. Uh, the CPI, Consumer Product Index, is also part of this uh, that measures inflation uh, over time. 
And so these numbers are going to change every year, okay? Um, and as you see, the first column is for a family of one, uh, second column is a family of two, three, four, five, and so on. If your family is larger um, than, than five people, then of course you'll just need to um, um, add additional uh, money to that. And I think I'll be able to show that difference uh, here in a second. Um, let me quickly uh, talk a little bit about uh, exactly what's included in the housing. I think that's important. Um, so this is housing plus utilities, okay? And so um, that's going to include your phones, going to include your cables, going to include your internet. This is going to include um, any uh, sort of like music service, right? Uh, this is going to include your rent. This is going to include your mortgage. This is going to include your uh, home insurance. This is going to include renter's insurance. Um, anything that you spend for the home on a consistent basis, month after month, um, water, you know, is another one, uh, maintenance, repair, so paying the lawn guy to come out and cut the grass, all those things are going to be included in these amounts, okay? All right, so I think, I think we're good there. All right, so let's look at Colfax County, 1125 a month. OK, uh, that's for uh, a single person, just one person. All right. And that's what we're going to use uh, for our example today. All right. Just one person. We're going to keep it very simple. So we're going to take 1125 times 12. That gives us 13,500. That covers all of your housing and utilities. All right. Um, the next number is going to be uh, our personal expenses. And you can see kind of how it's broken down here. Uh, the USDA publishes a month to month uh, food expense chart. Um, and I'll show that here just for fun. Uh, but this is what the IRS uses. OK, and so you can use the USDA uh, chart as well. Um, uh, when you're doing this kind of stuff with the IRS, it's not guaranteed to work, but uh, if done properly, it will definitely work for sure. Okay, um, so food, one person, three eighty-five a month. House, housekeeping supplies, apparel and services, personal care products, miscellaneous. Okay, seven fifteen a month. Uh, let's take a quick look at what the IRS is including in this. Okay, uh, da, 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 da. here we go. So. And you see the Bureau of Labor Statistics, BLS. Maybe we'll, we'll talk about that in another video another time. So uh, this includes, you know, everything, snacks, meals, takeout, delivery, restaurants, okay, uh, laundry, cleaning supplies, postage, uh, lawn and garden supplies, clothes, shoes, watches, jewelry, watch repair, jewelry repair, okay? Uh, clothing rental is a thing, right? Uh, personal care products, hair, toothbrush, everything that you can imagine that you use uh, for yourself, for your personal self, are going to be included um, in this $715 a month uh, for one person, okay? Bank fees, credit card payments, um, th those things, um, well, let me say this, uh, credit card payments um, will be included, but uh, only if you argue. I'm just being honest with you. You're going to have to argue with the IRS to get them included, but you can get them included, okay, the credit card um, uh, payments. Um, but the rest of this stuff, uh, definitely, uh, you're good to go. Uh, taxpayers allowed, family size, okay, all right. So that's it. So, again, 715 a month. We're going to pull up another calculator here. If uh, my computer will work with me. All right, here we go. This thing blinked out earlier today when I was doing a teleconference with a client, so I really hope it doesn't happen right now. All right, 85.80 a year, and we're going to add that to our um, to our 13.5. Make sure I get that right. 85.80. Okay. All right, so we're at 2280. All right, next, um, out of pocket medical. Now, again, this is going to be um, 
and, and you know, again, it's an average across the country. Okay, this isn't going to be uh, specific to your 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 local um, town or whatever. This is going to be on average across the country. Um, I only include this number if uh, the taxpayer has like prescription medication that they're paying for every month or every quarter or something, or if they have health insurance through their company or they're paying for some sort of health insurance. Okay. Um, other than that, I typically don't include this, uh, but here it is, right? So if you're under 65, it's $56 per person. That's important to understand. $56 per person. I was just talking to a client today who is spending four ninety six a month for a family of four. Um, and so uh, that is uh, just a bit, well, not just a bit, but it is, uh, well, let me see. Curious now. 56 times four. Yeah, yeah. So that's, that's double um, uh, the IRS standard. So um, this particular client won't be able to use all of the 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 medical uh deduction in this case but it, anyway so 56 per person okay so we're going to go ahead and we're just going to add that in uh let's try a number here all right so 672 all right next thing is transportation now this is a big one okay if there is not a vehicle registered in your name, I suggest that you use the public transportation uh, number, uh, which is 224 a month, okay? Um, if you do have a vehicle registered in your name uh, and you do not have a car note, uh, then you're going to use the operating cost, okay? If you own a vehicle and you do have a car note, you're going to use both ownership cost and operating cost all right and so let's uh take a quick look at what that means ownership costs um the monthly payment on the lease or car loan or the ownership costs shown in the table below if the taxpayer has no lease or car loan payment the amount allowed for ownership cost will be zero okay so again uh, if you own a vehicle and you're paying a car note okay uh, then you're going to use the ownership cost uh, plus operating cost if you do not have a car note then you're going to use just operating cost okay all right so um, now again this is broken down by region uh, you'll notice as i go through here every city in every part of the country is not necessarily listed you'll have to just find somewhere that is near you so i was talking to a young lady today uh, who lives in north carolina and so i use baltimore um, uh, for, for for her number uh, but again you just have to kind of use uh, whatever is uh, closer to you um, in, in our example we're using uh, new mexico so uh, we're going to use phoenix as our example okay so one vehicle operating cost 200 and $25 gonna uh, just do that and and keep in mind this is going to be um, for uh, you know gas uh, insurance uh, maintenance um, those types of things right just I uh, just operating the vehicle repairs tires uh, whatever right just operating a vehicle uh, $2,700 a year we're gonna add that to our number here Okay, and now we're going to assume, all right, um, that this particular person has a car note, all right, um, just to so we have something to play with here. That's five twenty one a month. All right, sixty two fifty two. I'm gonna add that to our number. All right. And so as you can see, we're already getting up pretty high here. So we're, we're at 31,000. Uh, and we have something else to add. Actually, no. Okay, we're done. Okay. Now, so uh, keep in mind, this 31,000 is take home pay. All right. This is the money that you actually have after all the taxes have been paid after everything is done you have take home pay of thirty one thousand seven hundred four dollars now what we need to do in order to figure out what that is before tax because many of you know how much you make 
before tax, not necessarily after tax. We're going to quickly do that calculation, okay? I'm going to going to walk you through um, uh, with you uh, just real quick. So we know that Social Security is taxed at 6.2%. Uh, uh, Medicare is taxed at 0.145. So we have, uh, you know, 0.8 basically, but let's just do the math. So we're going to multiply, I'm sorry, not multiply. We're going to divide our number here, the 31,000 by 9235. So 0.9235. All right. So um, we know that after uh, Medicare and, and Social Security, is added back to um, our, our number here. We're up to 34,000. Now we have to think about federal taxes, okay? Because remember, 31,000 is our take home after federal taxes. And so we have to figure out what the federal taxes are gonna be on this money. And to do that, we're going to use the IRS uh, tax table. And we are in 2020, so we're going to use the 2020 tax table. Uh, that also uh, will change year to year. And this is what the tax table looks like. Remember, we're just a single person, so we're going to be taxed at the single rate, which is higher um, than... All right. So we got to do another calculation here, 34, 330. All right, and so what I'm doing is, is I'm, I'm, I'm adding um, the standard deduction uh, to this number. Oh, I'm sorry, no, yeah, 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 no, that's wrong. Subtract, subtracting, why am I adding? 34, 330, okay, 34, 330. All right, subtracting the standard deduction from this number uh, to figure out our, our taxable income. So 21,930. And we see that the taxes on that income is 2434. And so we're going to add that. All right, so what this is saying okay is that if you make and let's uh let's do this number two all right if you make anything less than 17 dollars an hour okay at a full-time job you do not owe taxes period even though your tax return is going to show maybe you owe taxes you don't owe taxes because you'll be able to file an offering compromise and show that, hey, I don't make enough to pay these taxes. Now, of course, uh, we calculated this based on, again, a single person uh, who owns a vehicle and is paying a car note, okay? Uh, if you don't have a car note, if you don't have a vehicle, of course, the calculation is going to change. Um, and we also used, remember, the out-of-pocket medical of 56 a month. So if you don't have medical insurance, if you don't have uh, any sort of uh, prescription drugs or anything like that, then you'll want to take that out of the calculation as well. I don't want to go through uh, multiple scenarios because this video is already going to be long. Um, but with all those things that we added, okay, if you make under 17 bucks an hour, then you don't owe taxes at all, period. There's no reason for you to have taxes come out of your paycheck. Uh, you owe zero taxes. Now, what that means is, is that um, the IRS will tell you that you owe taxes and you're going, going to have to file uh, this offer and compromise, basically detailing uh, exactly what we went through, right? Um, you're going to have to calculate um, that the housing and utilities, you're going to have to calculate uh, this stuff, and you'll say, hey, I make less than this, therefore I don't owe taxes, and you're good. Um, one of the caveats, uh, to this offering compromise is that you have to remain current on filing all of your, your tax returns. Um, but again, even that's not really valid because even if you don't file your tax returns and they tell you, okay, well now all this tax is due, again, Taxpayer Bill of Rights, you don't owe this money, you've just filed another offer, okay? Um, 
this is a, a very big deal. Um, I've known people in the past um, that have had, you know, uh, 10, 20, 30, 40, $50,000 uh, in, in tax debt. And if they don't make enough money to pay that debt, then they don't owe the money. It just goes away. Okay. Um, now, there's a lot of uh, commercials I've heard on TV and on the radio, and I've even seen some on the internet uh, talking about uh, uh, IRS debt forgiveness and all this kind of stuff. And it is true, um, but I don't like the sensationalism behind it because um, they act as if it's some sort of program, but it's not a program. It's just your taxpayer bill of rights that have been around for a very long time. And it's always been the case that if you cannot afford to buy food, if you cannot afford to pay your rent or mortgage, you are not required to pay taxes. That's just the way it goes. You have to be allowed to live. You can't pay taxes and not be able to live. You can't pay taxes and not be able to feed your family. It doesn't work that way. Um, and so it's important that everyone understands this, but they also understand the math behind it because the numbers is everything, right? Um, there are forms and stuff like that uh, that uh, are required to fill out, but it is also possible to, uh, to do this simply over the phone with the IRS agent uh, to get this done. You have to be very careful, though, because when you're on the phone with the IRS agent, they're going to ask you questions, um, and those questions are going to be exactly this stuff. How much do you spend on, spend on food? How much do you spend on And so you'll want to make sure that you're answering those questions with these numbers, okay? Failure to do so means that they're going to calculate that, oh, well, you mean to tell me you only pay $200 a month in food? Oh, well, you got an extra $100 to send us this month. Right. So you want to make sure that you're using the, the, these numbers uh, when you're answering those questions um, and you want to make sure you have that down and understood before you even get on the phone with them. OK. And if you do that, then you'll be good to go and you won't have to worry about paying any sort of uh, unjust uh, tax. Um, I'm going to end the video here, but I do want to reiterate again. Uh, it's so important to me. Taxpayer Bill of Rights. Again, if you feel, okay, if you feel, if you think that taxes are unfair, if you think, if you feel that taxes are not just, they're not correct, they're not right, um, you do not have to pay them, period. Um, um, you know, now you're going to have to explain why it's not fair. You're going to have to explain why it's not right, why it's not correct, why it's not just. Um, but don't think that you're a crazy person. Don't think that you're being, um, what's the word I'm looking that, that, that you're being unreasonable, right? By, by feeling that way, by, by thinking that, because you're not. It's, it's literally part of the Taxpayer Bill of Rights. If you think it's unfair, it's probably because it is. And so for me as a professional, when I get that attitude, when I hear that from my clients, I start to ask questions. Why do you think this is unfair? Why do you think this is not just? What do you think is not right about this, right? And a lot of times it comes down to, I don't have this money. I don't have it, right? Um, the other thing I want to mention just, just, just really quick, and, and I'll leave this alone, um, but it's really important, is the number of people in the household. Um, a lot of times I find out that, you know, one person is really taking care of two or three. And then the question becomes, well, why are these people not on your tax return, right? And so that also becomes an issue. Uh, that's another subject for another day. I think I've covered that before anyway. Um, but anyway, that's it. Taxpayer Bill of Rights. Not going to title it that. Um, I'll figure out something <laughs> for me to you. Uh,